people on Zoom, are you there? Yes. Yes, good. Today it will, about, it will be about uh, sampling from discrete distribution and we only need to learn how to do it. method. There are other more fancy methods that uh, are more efficient but we will just stick with the basic one. Then it's called the tower sampling. And it's called tower sampling because now we are building a tower you. So let's consider this, this distribution. So x can be equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 for example. Can be something like this for example. Maybe a bit smaller because I need to. Okay. So, for example, I can call this P0, this is P1, P2, and P3. And we want to sample this distribution, which is meaning. I want to generate an x from p of x. So, as, as usual, my, my x is equal to 0 with probability p0, my x is equal to 1 with probability p1, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, the idea is very simple. I mean, if I can show you like, a, like the intuition why it works. I'm actually taking this, uh, these blocks and I put in these blocks one above the other in the, the following way. So I can take this block for example, I put it here. So here there is an axis for example. And this is 0 and this is P0. So I put the other block on top of the, of the previous one. More or less, a bit smaller. And this is P0 plus P1. Do you agree? So you put then the second block, the, the third block. This is P0 plus P1 plus P2. And the third one. So here, what's the number that I should put here? One, exactly. It's like the cumulative. It's the cumulative, exactly. So you can now imagine why the cumulating is appearing. Because now I'm doing something very simple. So now this one is associated, associated with zero. This is the first, this is the second, and this is the third. I'm building a tower, this is my tower. What I do now is to throw a uniform random variable. So we, we assume that we know how to generate uniform random variables here in this uh, segment. So a uniform random variable between 0 and 1. 
So what's happening now? It happens the following. If the prob if the if my my sample is in this small interval, it, it finishes in this small interval, which with the which probability? P zero, exactly, because it's the length of the, the this segment. So if my sample finishes here, I return zero. If it finishes here, I return one. So you can see that I'm returning zero with probability P zero, I'm returning one with probability P one, and so on and so forth. And so you can see that from gen the, the, the generation of a uniform sample, if I check, I mean, for example, this is 0 0.5, I check where it's 0 0.5 in this segment. If it's in this segment, I know that I have to return 2. Mm -hmm. And if I do it a lot of time, I generate a lot of axes. And uh, the probabilities of those axes follows my original distribution. This is the idea. So let's try to, to write this in a more compact way. As you told me, basically those are the cumulatives. So I can call this uh, C0, C1, C2. In particular, I can define C of x as the summation of y less than x, P of y. Actually, it's less or equal or equal than x. With the convention that uh, C0 is equal to 0. So for us, C0 is the, the, the base of our tower. So if I write the cumulative distribution for the discrete distribution P, I can say for generating samples from P is first generate It's, it's the cumulative. It's the cumulative. It's not related to what we did yesterday. Uh, yes, it is. It, it is. is. I mean, yeah. here, here we are in discrete for discrete distributions. Okay. But I mean, yeah. Later, I will do a small parenthesis about continuous distribution. For continuous distribution, instead of the summation, you have the integral and uh, the integration below x. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But for for discrete distribution, is more simple. You know. Let's generate a sample U uniform in 0, 1. And x is equal i. x is equal i if c, uh, yeah, i minus 1, no, i. Now, in what I did now is uh, like this. Uh, yes. Because if... Uh, is it in the second line? In the second line, x. And, uh, no, um, upper. I generate a u uh, uniform in a zero, 1. And then you return x equal i if u is between uh, c y c i and c i plus one. So you return zero if it's between zero and one. You return and so on and so forth. Of course, by by construction, the cumulative of the the last number is one. So you ensure that uh, in your your sampling is normalized. So yeah, this is very simple. It's, uh, I mean, the basis for generating, uh, generating uh, discrete samples is what we will use to solve the exercise. Actually, actually ju just to, told you, to tell you some, some, Im some improvement that you can do here. You can imagine that, the, uh, I mean, how do you check this condition like uh, on, on your program? Some ideas? How do, you? How do you check this condition? So you have a number here, for example, 0.5. Yeah. 
how do you check when is between CI and CI plus one? It's like, uh, if, yeah, if, if there is a if, but there is also something more. And, uh, there are, well, there are two possibilities. One is uh, no, I, I mean, it's simple. Maybe. No. You just have to cycle over all. I mean, you start looking at in the first integral and you do an if. Then you look in the second integral and you do an if. And you do a third oh, integral until so you find. Exactly, so four. Exactly, you four over the integrals and then if inside the integral. So you can imagine that, I don't know, I have uh, a lot of uh, numbers here, for example, like in, in uh, easing model or whatever. Yes, this is the reason why I'm not using this for easing model. We will see this. But if I have a lot of numbers, you know that your for loop is going, uh, I mean, is running a lot of time, so it can be very, very bad for performance. Would we do the random dot sum thing? For generating this, you will use a random dot. Uh, yeah, uh, random. Yes. And then, then you for. There's also one for uniform. Yeah, there is also random dot uniform, uniform, yes. You can use also this one, yeah. Maybe it's more easy because you just specify the up and the low bounds, and it's fine. But yeah, I mean, so some tricks to improve this search over the the the, the, the interval is. Uh, I mean, we we won't see this ju just as, as. You can, for example, be smart and say, I I I order my my blocks in a way that uh, the largest one stays at the beginning. So when I do the search, there is more probability that I get the, the I mean, there is more probability that I get the, the largest one. So you know, if I search my, my, my blocks, the, the, the sampling is faster. This is one way. Otherwise, uh, uh, you can also do sort of bisection method. I don't know if you ever heard about the bisection method. That is something very smart for, actually this is what, uh, your C++, whatever computer language programming is doing when you search inside arrays, which is, uh, I mean, you have an interval uh, divided by a lot of parts. You have a number and you have to decide in which interval it, it uh, stays. So you first look in the first part and you, you decide if it's up or down, then in the other part. So you can prove that this way of searching scales logarithmically with the number, while this, that kind of search uh, scales uh, linearly with the number of... Uh, so it's much faster if the number of intervals goes to infinity. But yeah, this is, those are just words in a way. I mean, we, we, want, we want to implement these methods. Okay. Um, Okay, now tell me how I can generate uh, the, the, a coin tossing with this way. Like imagine that you have a coin that you toss, there is probability P of getting head. Okay. You see that I'm exactly doing, I mean, I can use the same principle as here. Exactly. Yes, in that case. It's head. It's. It's head, yes, yes, you're right. Yes, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, if, uh, if it's a coin, we have just zero and one. So, let's uh, do something here. So, head with probability P. And uh, tail with probability one minus p, which is one. And so basically, x is equal to head if u less than p, or tail if u uh, larger or equal than. Uh, I mean, I, I think that I do the inverse in the exercise, but I switch tail and head, let me check.
the actual, I think it was the opposite because for me, zero was the head, no, zero was tail, and one was head. The head probably is P, so one, one is the head, yes. Yeah, actually, yes, what I'm doing is that I'm returning, uh, it's the same, I'm returning tail if u is less than 1 minus p, and I'm returning head if, if it's larger. It's, it's the same, it's the same. Because the probability is the same, 1 by 2, 1 by 2. What do you mean by, is the same 1? No. Like p and 1 by p, right? It's equal in this case. No, 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 let's, no, 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 it's, they can be different. No, it's the same because I'm just switching uh, tail with head and uh, and uh, p with one minus p. Yes, uh, actually it's the same. I get it. It's, it's really the same. Okay, so the the first part of the exercise will be just generating a, a coin tossing. It's very simple, and to get. Um, an histogram like this in which you have uh, zero with a given probability and one with the other probability. And then we will do a, we will sol solve a sort of game with coin tossing and uh, yeah but maybe before doing this uh, let me just uh, finish what I have to tell you about uh, uh, sample generation and it last part is about generating sample in continuous distributions. I will just give you an idea why for continuous distribution we get the formula that I showed you yesterday. It's, it's really just an idea, it's nothing, uh, just intuition. So for uh, discrete distribution, we saw that basically what I'm doing is the following. So yeah, here I'm plotting the C of X, the cumulative and X. And what I'm doing, <coughs> like as a sort of animation, is like throwing a random point U, U here in this segment. And then if, uh, if U falls here, for example, you return a 3. If U falls here, you return a 2, and so on and so forth. So basically, it's like you, you, you are you are mapping u from the y-axis to the x-axis mm -hmm. by using the function function c. Mm -hmm. This is just an animation. I mean, you see this. It's uh, generating a random number between 0 and 1 and returning uh, the corresponding uh, value on the x-axis. But this is much more clear if I consider the inverse function. So basically, I switch the axis. So if I consider the inverse function, here I have Cx. the same plot with the axis switched. Actually what I'm doing now is to throw in a random sample on the x-axis and returning uh, c minus 1 because so I just... This should be x not c of x, right? It, this should be c. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. c and yeah, c minus, yeah, c minus 1. Or I mean, this is just a name of uh, 
Yes, if you can meet this one, yes. Yeah, you're right. I can call this X, actually. Yeah. But yeah, you, you see the, the logic. Here, I'm throwing a sample here, and I'm returning the C minus 1 of the sample. So this is where, I mean, you, you can do this in a rigorous way with all the mathematics. Mm -hmm. You have to discretize this in an uh, infinitesimal interval, and you can prove that for continuous distribution, x is uh, c minus 1 u. But I mean, it comes from this fact that you are mapping a random uniform number using the inverse commutative function. OK, just to give you an idea, it's not a problem. Okay, good. you to start solving the first two exercises of the notebook and uh, yeah when at some point uh, I will uh, I will explain something more about the, the next part of the exercise So now what you should have, more or less all, all of you have it, is an X, which is like a coin tossing. Let's call it uh, Bernoulli probability pick. Now we, I mean, we are simulating a sort of game. So basically there are two players, me and someone else. And I have a coin uh, with a bias uh, P1. I don't know, maybe a fair coin, and I throw in my coin n one time. So basically, what I have is a sequence of x one, x n one. So I throw my coin n one times, and each outcome has has uh, had we probability one. All right, I have a sequence of tossing, of tossings. Then there is a second player with uh, another coin with probability P2, which throw the coin N2 times. All right, and we generate another sequence of tossings. And then who wins? Actually, you compute this number, A. A is a function of uh, x uh, larger 1, x vector 2. Which is equal to the number of heads in x1 minus the number of heads. So it's a stupid game, but it's two players, they throw a lot of coins uh, with different biases, with di in different times. 
and I win an amount of monies, which is the difference between the, the number of heads that I get minus the number of heads that get the other. So if I get more heads, this number is positive, I'm winning something. If the other gets more heads, I'm losing something. Okay? So actually, in the, in the Matteo Marsili course, I think uh, maybe already tomorrow you, you will be ready to compute this analytically, but at the moment let's assume that you are not able to compute it analytically. It's quite simple. So we, want, we don't know math, so we want to estimate this number with Monte Carlo. If you don't know math, it's, a, it's always a good, a good way to use numerical simulation. And uh, I mean, it's the usual, uh, what we want, of course, is what I get on average, so the expectation value of my A. So what I want is A, which is summation over all the possible sequences, x1 and x2, of the probability of getting x1. Okay, this is the true average. But we, we don't know how to compute the true average, so we will use the sample average. So I generate a lot of times, a lot of sequences, x1 and x2. So let's say that I generate large n times a sequence 1 and large n times a sequence x2. And my A is given by 1 over n, summation over i of A x 1, let's say A, so the usual formula that you, I think you already recognize. I mean, the different, I mean, it's different from the one that we saw yesterday or two days before because here you have two probabilities, but actually, I mean, it's, it's, it's the same. Uh, I have two probabilities because I have two independent events. Actually, if you want to be really precise, you have, you have to write px1, x2. So this becomes your observe your, your, your variable over which you are integrating. But the fact that the two sequences are independent allows you to throw, to, to split the probabilities and things like this. But it, it's just a formality, actually. It's, a, it's exactly the formula that we computed uh, the first day. And so this is the exercise. So you, you generate, so be careful because we have first to generate uh, a sequence 1, which is of length n1. And you have to do this sequence large n times. So you have first an iteration over n1, an iteration over n2. For generating the two sequences and then a, an iteration on the top over large n, which is a lot of those sequences. And then for each of these sequences, you compute A, which is number of heads in the first sequence minus number of heads in the second sequence, and then you can compute this. So try to think about it. I, it's much simpler than what you can guess from this complex problem. And uh, what is a binomial distribution? Okay, so so if you are smart enough, you understand that, that actually 
this expression, your, observa your observable, your, uh, yeah, your observable, actually depends only on the number of heads. So H is basically, let's call, uh, let's call this small H1. But if you follow the course of Matteo Marsili, you, you will learn that uh, the number of heads that you get in a sequence of coin tossing follows a binomial distribution. Which means, uh, you know, binomial distribution is the one that it's written uh, here. So, given a sequence of bias P, and then so can you share the screen because we can't we can see. Ah, you can see. Sorry, yeah, you're right. Yeah, right. Okay, so here you have the binomial distribution, binomial distribution. So your your sequence that has size n and the bias p has a number of heads that follows this pro this this probability distribution. Uh, this is the binomial coefficient, I think you know it. So what, do you, what you can do, I mean, you basically know that here instead of all the sequence, you just need to know the number of heads. And here you can use So wh why is much is, is smarter than before? Because before, to, gen to generate the whole sequence of coins, you had to generate uh, n1 plus n2 random numbers, then check if they were larger or smaller. So you had to generate n1 plus n2 random numbers. In, that ca in this case, you can just generate two random numbers, number of heads in the two sequences by sampling the binomial distribution. So you forget that there is a generation of coin tossing that underlines your process. You are confident that the number of heads follow the binomial distribution. So what you do instead of generating coin tossing, you generate heads from the binomial distribution. Do you agree with this formula? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have to correct this other formula. Uh, okay, this is the, the true one. Uh, you can compute it, but let's forget about this. Mm -hmm. What you can compute with Monte Carlo is this one. Yeah. So now your random sample, in, instead of generating the two sequences n times, that requires large n times n1 plus n2 random number generations. Do, do you agree with this? Because you have to generate uh, x1 and uh, to xn plus 1, n1, x1 to n, xn2, 4n times. Now we generate just two random numbers, n times. Okay, so before you were generating n times n1 plus n. Now you are generating 2 times n. But now your samples follow the binomial distribution. There. I mean, I, I think it's simpler than it seems. I mean, uh, how can I explain it better? What do, what do you, what it, what it means to generate uh, samples from the binomial distribution? It's different from before, because the binomial but distribution... Is, Sorry? It means that we have half, uh, just with one information, we can know the other information. Yeah, yeah, in a way, yes. You can ignore all the information about the sequence. The only information that you yeah. need are the number of heads. That you know it yeah, follows the binomial heads distribution. Heads will give you all the information about the system. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, uh, yeah. Good. The only point is that instead of generating 
points. You have to sample the binomial distribution, which is a bit more harder. But you can use exactly the method that I told you at the beginning of the lecture. So you know the binomial distribution is something like this. So it's 0. Actually, I think I have a plot here. It's better if I show you a plot. It's something like this. So to sample this distribution, what do you do? You compute the cumulative. So in this case, instead of two outcomes, you have 10 outcomes, for example, if n is equal to, a, to 10. And then you check, uh, you generate a uniform random number. You check, you remember, all the, all the, all the, all what, what I showed you before about the tower sampling. So you compute the cumulative binomial distribution and you generate your number of head samples by sampling the binomial distribution. So let me show you if I have Let me show you directly the solution. So, uh, uh, okay, this is it. So you've just imported the binomial distribution. Uh, no, I'll, okay. This what to plot the theoretical uh, line. Actually, the first part of the exercise is to learn how to sample a binomial distribution. So this is a comparison between the simulation and the theory. So the simulation is uh, H samples. And actually, actually this was, uh, no, it's zero, sorry. Okay, so see, yeah, e here is to generate the binomial distribution. So as you told before, you first need to build the cumulative. Yeah. So that you write a function for the cum cumulative binomial distribution. Mm -hmm. For building the cumulative, you have to be aware that uh, the you, have, you need a first point, which is 0. Then you iterate over all n, mm -hmm. and you append the cumulative at the, at the previous uh, position. Minus 1 is the, the last position in the array. Is there a way of doing this without form loops? Uh, I, um, I, I don't think so. Okay. Maybe there is, but I don't know. Okay. Actually, you can sample the binomial using uh, numpy ra dot random, but uh, let's do it with learning how to, how to do it. So this is a function to generate the cumulative of the distribution. And so once you have the cumulative, you can generate a sample in the way that I showed you at the beginning of the lecture. So you generate a random number between 0 and 1. I don't know wh why I did this. I think you can forget about this. I don't know why I did this. But then uh, you just look, you just look for the interval in which your uh, your uniform random number falls. So you check if it's less, if it's uh, larger than uh, cumulative one i minus one, if it's less than the cumulative i, and if it's in th inside this interval, you turn the, the the value. This is the, the formula that I showed you at the beginning of the lecture. I think you did the if because if it's less than zero. Ah, okay, no, because uh, yeah, because here I'm using a I'm I'm cutting the first position of the cumulative yes. first. for some reason, yeah, because yes. here, yeah. But if I remove this, because this I'm, in this way I'm cutting the position zero. Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. But if I remove this uh, and I remove this, I think it's equivalent. It should work anyway. But here I have to substitute like this. Sorry. Oops. I think. Okay, let me check if it's right. And test everything. <coughs>
Okay, never change your code while you're next. Well, actually, should be, should be right. Uh, this. I think the problem is in the beans. This to run. Is there an type here? Okay, let me come back. Okay, now, no, it doesn't work much. Okay, sorry guys, I don't know why it's... Uh, I think I do. Yeah, I don't know, this solution works. Uh, it's probably because we have to cut it, otherwise uh, the cumulative will be greater than 1. If it's, it greater, can, uh, than, if it's greater than 1, then the, it won't be a probability distribution anymore. But why do you say it's greater than 1? It shouldn't, because... If, if, if we get a value greater no, than now, 1. Now it's, yeah, but... No, okay, uh, but in the way I'm building the cumulative distribution is not uh, greater than one. Oh. Is that no, but now it works anyway. I mean, it, I don't know. Now it works. It's just. Uh, I think because that's the ground that we it's yeah um arrange. Uh huh. So, um, it's n plus one. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So it was it was uh, wrong the, the range of the beans. No, no. Um, the okay. for I, is that a histogram? Mm -hmm. So, like for that, the zero, then that two four that uh, determines the bins is mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. So, the number of bins is n plus one. Like, so, you. But you I think it first, yeah. here the number of bins is n plus one. Uh, no, but it. <laughs> But here, we, here it's working. I mean, yeah. the point is that I mean, can work. It cannot work. But <laughs> you can solve the problem by sampling heads from the binomial distribution. That was the point. Okay. And uh, and yeah, I mean, try to solve the exercise. The important part. Uh, it's important also the second part. But try to solve the exercise at least at point two C, two C that most of you did. And then, I mean, also, no, tomorrow, what's, yes, tomorrow the topic is two-level system. Tomorrow we will see again the sampling from discrete probability distributions. So, I mean, we will see again this topic because we have to simulate the two-level system. So we will generate the cumulative, we will compute the, even the uniform random number, what is the outcome, and so on. Okay.
ok Ah, here it's the article. 